Good evening, everybody. So I just finished setting up the EG4 6000 XP, and I kind of want to see if I can get the uh, app set up and configured before it's time for dinner. I might have 10 minutes, so let's find out how long it's actually going to take me to set up this app. <laughs> So looking at the manual, we have page, uh, version 1.2.0. I'm looking at page 40, smartphone app setup. So we have to register for an account, uh, provide customer code, dongle, serial. So obviously I have to add the dongle first. So let's pull that out of the little box that it came in and get that mounted over here on the side of the inverter. So the dongle comes in this little box and then inside the bag that had your uh, serrated flange nuts and your mounting anchors for the inverter. It also has four screws to screw in and lock in the dongle onto the side of the inverter. It's kind of interesting. It's actually an HDMI connection on the end. I haven't seen that before on some kind of a, a Wi-Fi transmitter or something. So you're going to want to make sure that your indicator lights are facing out. So the long side of the connection is going to be against the inverter. So we're going to take this, slide it all the way up, and you see that there's actually a green light blinking. That's the bottom Wi-Fi light. And then the four screws go in the four corners. So we've got the bottom light blinking. I believe that means that it's not connected to any internet connection. So I've already gone and downloaded the EG4 monitor app from the App Store, so I'm going to open that app up. The very first thing on the manual, it says you need to register for an account. So I'm just going to register for the account. You can do this online at monitor.eg4electronics.com as well. All right, so this is a little annoying. I'm trying to configure the app, I'm used to tapping on uh, where it says username, it won't let me. That's a title. So you actually have to tap on the far right in order for it to actually be able to be entered in. That's kind of confusing. It looks like it's supposed to be tap on the name to enter the field. I have to know what my offset is. That's kind of that's kind of cheesy. I think I'm in four. I'll have to look later. Installer, um, is the installer code the customer code? Uh, I guess it's, I'm gonna try it, is that? So I got mine from, I believe it's, current connected dongle serial number and pin. Hopefully this is not case sensitive. Registration successful. Is it supposed to take me someplace? <laughs> Guess not. Maybe I have to just go back and username, password, login. All right, so that created my account. Okay. Nope, I don't want to add a dongle. I think I need to still, what's the manual say? Set your Wi-Fi, plug in the LED. Oh, so I have to do a dongle connect. Okay, do I have to log out of the app in order to do that? Probably. All right, dongle connect. Oh, I have to, you have to connect to the Wi-Fi of the, of the, Transmitter first, so settings, Wi-Fi, all right, and then the BJ is my Wi-Fi dongle, so we're connected to that. Now let's go back to the app, dongle connect, allow, and it failed. 
Okay, so I'm guessing it worked the second time. Select your home Wi-Fi, enter the password, hit home Wi-Fi connect, set up successful dongle or restart later. What's later? I guess that means now. So now it's showing all three lights connected. It doesn't, like when it finishes and successfully does something, it doesn't go back to like a home screen or pri previous page or anything. You have to do that manually. That would be nice if it did that on its own. It seems like it should be able to very easily. So now that that's connected to the Wi-Fi, I created my account already. I should hit login. And we're logging in. Go. Go. Okay, it's... Oh. Okay, so that's something you gotta pay attention to. Once you get things connected, you have to come back on your phone or your device and get back in your normal Wi-Fi. See, that was something that the 6500s did do it disconnected you from the, the Wi-Fi network that the inverter created, and it lets you fall back onto your main home network. That's why it was sitting there spinning for me. So now that I'm back on my main network, yeah, network may have trouble. Duh, because it's not on the internet. Okay, log in. And we're connected to our device. And that looks like it's all connected. So overview. Quick charge, six kilowatt power rating, firmware version. Tapping on that stuff, can't you can't do anything. So nothing on the home screen if you tap on it. Okay, so there's the little refresh icon. Okay, to the left of standby power is looks like the last refresh time. So if I hit refresh. It does update slowly. I don't want to hit quick charge. I don't really have any data to show. Monitor. I don't know what's supposed to be on that monitor page because there's nothing there. Settings. So read all. I'm sure I'm missing settings because I don't have what installer settings or, or something like that. Need to see what it's gonna to take to get those settings. But, so we can AC first start time, take load together, export to grid. Export to grid is not really applicable because this is a off grid only. So that setting shouldn't even be there. Charge settings and discharge settings. So, I mean, it seems pretty basic. Probably easier to change some settings on here than it is on the inverter itself. I wonder if monitors blink because the inverter's turned off. What if I turn that on? So now that that's turned on, let's hit the refresh button. I kind of wish that the refresh icon was static so it floated on top of everything so I don't have to scroll back to a certain spot on the page to hit the refresh icon or even up with put it up at the top next to the little person so I'm discharging 20 watts when nothing's connected 20 watts from the battery 14 watts from the inverter for nothing nothing's plugged in well, that don't make any sense. Refresh. There we go. Two watts. Yeah, it's gotta be something weird because it's showing that there's a load on the battery. So is it taking its own idle? It can't be taking its own idle usage into account because it would be a lot higher. Yeah, it says line one, 13 watts down here at the bottom. Refresh, yeah, it's back up to 14 watts now. That's weird. Is it using 14 watts just because it's enabled? Yeah, 
I guess I'll have to figure that out. So I'm on firmware version 180B0C. But, I mean, it only took us a few minutes to get the dongle set up, the app configured, creating the account. Not too bad. And I'm seeing most of my stats. Okay, so monitor, monitor is still blank, even though the inverter's turned on. So... I don't know what's supposed to be on the monitor page. And if it's not supposed to, if it's supposed to be blank or supposed to be used for something else, then why show it for this inverter? Little glitchy app, a little bit. There's room for improvement though. And I'm sure that, you know, they're still working on making tweaks and changes and st to stuff. Since we got the remote capability set up with the app and the dongle, I figure we I could show you the EG4 monitoring website as well, so that you can see some of the differences between the monitoring site and the app. So the site itself is monitor.eg4electronics.com, and it's gonna come up to this login screen. And for those of you that don't have uh, a 6,000 XP or an 18K PV, you can still come to this site and hit visit demo station and see what the website is actually gonna look like what kind of information it gives you. But in my case, I will log into my account and it's gonna drop us right into the monitor page, which shows you all the basic information that you're gonna need right at your fingertips. Uh, production, output. Uh, you scroll down to the bottom and it gives you some charts. Uh, overview, again, you see that I don't really have anything because I haven't done much. The odd thing that I'm, I'm still seeing is that almost 20 watt draw when nothing's hooked up and nothing's being powered. So I still have to figure that one out. But anyways, get me going off on tangents. Uh, data section. So this is gonna show us different details. You can drill in and look at specifics regarding different variables and changing your dates. If you've got multiple inverters, multiple environments, you can obviously select and filter based on those. Okay, so here's here's the log of, of everything being sent from your inverter to the monitoring site. And if we look at the timestamps here, it looks to be about every three minutes. You can hit that resync button to get the current information, but this is when the data is sent. Local data, event history. I'll say a lot of, again, a lot of this is empty because I just got everything set up. Overview. Maintenance. So maintenance looks to be where you can change some of your different settings. I know in the app, when you hit the maintenance area, it automatically reads the information and loads it for you. On the website, it does not. So you have to hit read, and then you'll watch the data just start going t -t 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 all the way down as it's populating everything. Oh, you can export the values. That's kind of nice, and they've got it broken down by different sections. Inverter will always take... Okay, so that's kind of nice, having these little tool tips for different settings so you can know what it's about and you can collapse the sections. Honestly, with the amount of data, I kind of would think that the sections should be collapsed to start. But again, that's, that's the web developer in me. Weather Optimize is a fairly new feature I think they recently released for, I want to say it's like, determining when your system is going to charge from the grid based on the weather. I don't know how it's pulling in the weather data because all we set is a time zone. Time zones are pretty big. So yeah, I don't know how it works. And unfortunately, I don't see any help section on the website to actually take you to any docs or anything other than those inline tooltips. So that's something that could be updated and added. And then you can update the firmware through 
both the mobile app and it looks like the EG4 website. So a little more, a little more control, a little more functionality through the monitoring website, but I'm sure a lot of people are just going to have like having that, that data right in their hands. So we got the dongle all set up, the account created, and we got the app all set up on the mobile phone. We also were able to take a look at the monitoring website and just poke around at, at both places. Uh, don't forget that one pretty big gotcha when you're setting up the dongle that you actually have to go through and disconnect from the local Wi-Fi created by the dongle to reconnect to your home Wi-Fi or your home network. Otherwise, you're going to sit there and not be able to do anything. Which does bring me up to something that I didn't test, but this does have the ability for a local connection from your mobile device to the inverter to where you don't have to have it set up for an internet connection. You can use your local home network or I believe even a Bluetooth connection maybe to be able to view the data from the inverter in your mobile app. And something that I did notice after the fact, I actually downloaded the EG4 app on my tablet, but it does not seem to be optimized for the tablet. That could be an easy fix and win for EG4 or Lux Power, whoever, whoever puts out that app. There's a lot of information there. You can make a lot of changes, but not all the settings that you can change on your inverter are available in the app or on the monitoring website. So keep that in mind. From a usability standpoint, it, it does seem to work and it does seem to get you a lot of the information that you need, even though it's not 100% real time. So it was fun digging into it, fun seeing how to set it all up, configure it, and being able to see all that data in my hand for this inverter. It might not be 100% useful when you're trying to perform a real time test, but if you're trying to look back at historical information from the past, or have remote diagnostic ability from support, uh, I think it could be pretty beneficial for you. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.